you know when you know something but you can't work out how it can be true but you know it is true and what's kind of happened in the last few years the most important part of my life and my work um, is delving deeper and deeper and deeper into the understanding of the nature of reality what this reality is we're experiencing and what I uh, concluded and continue to conclude even more deeply because it's an ongoing journey is that this reality we think is physical and out there is actually the the equivalent of a movie screen it's it's the done deal level of our experience when it manifests here it's like the pictures in a movie theater hitting the screen you ain't going to change them there because if you want to change the movie you change what the projector is projecting then you change the movie on the screen and if we relate that to the world that we're experiencing if you um if you relate that to what i'm saying about um the nature of reality the, the, the base construct of this reality is vibrational information, waveform information. It's what we call, what I call anyway, a friend of mine in South Africa calls the metaphysical universe as opposed to the physical universe or holographic universe as it is. And so that's the prime reality. And what we do is we tune into that vibrational reality through the five senses. I mean, the ear is the classic. It vibrates sound. It turns the sound into electrical signals, sends it to the brain. The brain decodes that into sound. We hear when the sound, uh, when the brain decodes it. We taste when the brain decodes it. And it's all vibrational information, initially becoming electrical information, then digital and holographic information, which is what we call this world, which exists not out there, but in here, like, a, like the internet. Um, the World Wide Web exists within the computer and on the screen of the computer, not outside of it. And therefore, the information that we decode from the metaphysical, from the vibrational information construct into the holographic, decides what we experience in this reality, the done deal, the screen. And I was on the Alex Jones show recently, and, and Alex um, is part of, a, part of a question and a statement, reeled off all these different aspects of the conspiracy, the control system across everything from food to, to right across to banking, right across to wars, all these different things. You know, and, and you know, I said, but, you know, um, do we think that that great mass of different aspects of this conspiracy that's unfolding that all interrelate to each other and all are all time connected to to interact and connect with each other it's like a dom domino. yeah are we really saying that that is orchestrated by men in dark suits sitting around a table deciding their next move no so how is it done and I would suggest it's done like this because we're dealing, this is a really important area um, for people to appreciate how things are not like we think they are. Um, and that's to understand that the cutting edge in the public arena of scientific knowledge and the knowledge of reality and physics is not the cutting edge. It's the cutting edge within our human society that we perceive. It's not the cutting edge in the underground projects and it's certainly not the cutting edge beyond them when you meet the force that is actually ultimately behind the conspiracy on the underground projects. They understand what I'm saying here is the way that reality works. Its basis is a vibrational information construct like the World Wide Web. Now, what they do is they download, uh, program, whatever you want to call, call it, infuse the information blueprint 
of the global conspiracy into the waveform uh, vibrational level and then humans who are of a certain vibrational state that connects with that information then decode that information out into the holographic reality. They don't know they're doing that. A few at the core do. Most people don't. But government administrators and, 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 and the new breed of policemen, you know, the military policemen that they've become, and all these aspects of the control system that impose the will of the few on the many, while not consciously knowing that the, the few even exist, they are actually computer terminals, in effect, that are playing out this information into the holographic world. Um, and that's why it is so coordinated. Because what is happening here is a reflection of this information blueprint, and therefore it becomes an amazingly synchronistic, coordinated, interconnected expansion and expression an unfolding of the control system because it's the holographic version of this all the people are that are playing it out are vehicles to decode that and turn it in, in from in vibrational information into holographic reality they're conduits and when we, we talk about people being automatons that's what they are they don't have to be and when you ex open your consciousness open your mind to consciousness, your vibrational state quickens and you don't tune into this level of the crap in the metaphysical universe anymore. So you don't play it out. More than that, because you're not in it, playing it out by decoding it, you can see it. It's bloody obvious. Those people who are decoding it, they can't see it because they are it. Am I making sense? And so this vibrational level of reality is where everything's going to change. This is going to reflect the change, and we're going to say, ah, oh, there's a great transformation going on in the world. Yes, there is, on the screen, but where the transformation's coming from is a transformation of this, um, two things, a transformation of this vibrational construct, the blueprint fabric of this reality, and a change in the vibrational state of the conscious level of reality so that it no longer tunes into that information but tunes into that information and brings that into holographic reality and we will experience that we are experiencing that as the world changing but where it's changing from is what I call the metaphysical universe in the information construct now people are going to say this was a question about how you were not, how you're not been assassinated. <laughs> I'm getting there. That is the, the preamble background of what I'm saying. So, if I am going to be assassinated in the holographic reality that we're experiencing now, I have to decode that out of the information construct. They put in Ike assassinated into the information construct. But if I, don't, if I don't decode that out into the holographic reality, it can't manifest. And then you got, that's why you got Credo Mutra saying, Mr. David, they're trying to kill you, but they can't. Because I will not decode that into re this reality. And I feel it's, it's beyond me not or refusing to decode it, although that adds to its power, of course. There is some force, the force that made itself known to me 20 years ago through that psychic initially, that is blocking the ability of that information, that situation coming through me into the holographic world so someone goes bang, bang. It's not possible. I've known for 20 years that they couldn't kill me. Now I'm beginning to understand why they can't kill me. I'll leave this world when I arranged to leave it before I came here. And anyone can do that. It's just a case of taking your power back and realizing um, both where the power lies and also how this process works. 
because it, it was interesting. Before I began to understand any of this, um, I used to, you know, comment from time to time about my experiences in America. I first went there, well, I first went there in 1993 to talk at an animal rights um, conference. But the first time I went there to talk about this whole information was in 1996. And I went there and I was supposed to have had a series of, of talks lined up all over America for three months. I paid my own flight in there and everything. And I got there and nothing had been <laughs> arranged. I had one thing arranged, two things arranged. One was an, an event in Denver, Colorado, which I'd arranged myself. It was a conference. And another one was an event for me in Vancouver, uh, Canada, which a great guy called um, Joseph Duggan put on. But... Between that and after that were like weeks when I supposed to have been going from here, there, everywhere, talking, and nothing had been arranged. So I went around America that time with, with a friend of mine arranging talks on the hoof so that a talk would be arranged in, say, Tucson, Arizona, uh, and uh, seven days later I'd be doing it. I mean, you've got no run-up time, and I was surprised by, you know, here and there where, how many people came, but most of the time I was talking to myself. And uh, I went to Chicago and talked to eight people. I remember it was a really great night. And I, I, I said, you know, I, I, I could have phoned you or written to you and it would save me the bloody airfare. But what I, wh wh where I'm going with this in terms of this question was that in that period, I, I came across many whistleblowers, as they say. And there was a common theme. And that was that they were wearing their abuse by the state and, um, and their intimidation by the state as like a war medal. It was almost like to add to their credibility. They were saying, you know, I don't know how long people will be allow me to say this before they, they stop me, before they get me, before this and the, this business, you know. Or I, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to stay alive saying this stuff. And I used to sit there, and even in those days, 96, I used to think, you know, you want to be very bloody careful here, lads, because... You're going to create a self-fulfilling prophecy if you're not careful. And um, I was speaking in New England, and you know I, I was so well known and, and popular in those days that this um, event took place in someone's house. That's how big, <laughs> that's how big the audience was. Um, I did it in somebody's front room in New England. Very kind of them, uh, but it just shows you how far it's come. Anyway, I, I stayed at this person's house, and they went out during the day. And there was these, all these videos and stuff. And I put a video in. And there was this guy saying some very, very interesting things about his experiences on the inside. But he kept saying, I don't know how long they're going to let me continue to say this. Um, and I thought, well, God, you know, you just, I wouldn't say that too often. I mean, the, the, literally the guy came back um, just after I'd finished watching it. And I said, hey, it's very interesting, that guy. I said, well, what's happened to him now? What's he doing? Oh, no, he's been dead. He's assassinated by the, by, the, by the government, right? And I'm thinking, do you know, I'm not surprised. And you see, what is happening here in terms of what I'm, that, um, I'm talking about is that if you accept that the authorities can kill you, and if even more than that, you're using the fact that they can and probably will as, as like part of your persona. I'm taking on the state, but I don't know how long before they kill me. What does that mean? You're not taking on the state at all. You're telling me how powerful the state is. And when, because of that, they vibrationally connect in with these um, blueprints in the vibrational level of the universe like we're going to take this guy out and they play it through mm. and through them manifest it holographically bang bang and I, I would say to people you know it's not it's not a war medal to say the state's after you um, or, or, or certainly not a war medal to say um, I accept the state's going to take me out at some time because I'm saying this. Like, look how brave I am. It's playing with fire. You're, you're creating a reality. You're, you're, you're telling the, the people the state has power over you. I do not accept that. 
I do not accept that the state has power over me. Because I do not have the perception that the state has power over me. Therefore, it cannot have power over me. It could cause me hassle here and there, okay, but we'll sort it. We'll sort it, whatever is thrown. And it's another example of where the real power lies in our lives. Not out there. There is no out there. It's in here. Yeah. It's giving something energy, isn't it? And it's... Yes, if, if, if you allow into your psyche the, the possibility that someone will, something will happen, you're allowing a much greater chance of it happening. Uh, than if you just block that process of decoding. So it's all always vibrating here, but it's never taking place here. 